Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends. It's only been a week and it feels like it's been forever. I hope you're all doing really, really well. I will be back shortly with one of my typical analytical videos, but today I just wanted to gossip about what I've missed. After, of course, missing you all. <laughs> I love reading and replying to the comments every day. So let me know down there. How are you? What's fresh? What's poppin'? The number one morsel tidbit that made me laugh while my time was otherwise occupied. <laughs> the virginity taker revealed. <laughs> I am the lady that Prince Harry wrote about in his book who he lost his virginity to. He may have been Prince Harry to everyone else, but to me, he was just Harry. We were mates. I love Sasha Walpole. I don't mind Harry writing that it was inglorious in his book. Um, it wasn't that glorious. We were drunk and having sex in a field. It's never going to be glorious. We were teenagers. Um, it just doesn't really seem a big deal to me because I've known for so long. Nobody from back then would be surprised that it was me and Harry. A lot of people knew about it. She just seems like such a nice, straightforward person, and she seems honest. There's zero deception, there's zero mystery building with Sasha. I hope she got paid well for this. Like, a year of university tuition well, at least. I hope. I don't know what the rate would be for something like this. I haven't seen Harry since that night. If I seen him in the streets, I would like to think that we could go for a drink. We were really good friends back then, and I wish him all the best. If it were me, I would have never, ever, ever revealed my identity. In fact, I would have appreciated Harry calling me an older woman in the book because it throws the dogs off the scent. Also, how rude, Harry. You ghosted Sasha? Rude. I would definitely have a drink with Sasha if I ever saw her on the street. <laughs> What do you guys think? Should Sasha have cashed in or should she have kept mom? Number two, the coronation invites. The coronation invites. They're going out this week. Did you know there are actually several kinds of invites? <laughs> if you are a member of the nobility playing a ceremonial role, you actually don't get an invitation. You get a command. <laughs> Once you show up for duty, if you will, you're given instructions and you're told to invite X number of train bearers, page boys, what have you, under the assumption that they will also be members of the nobility. Your attendants then, in turn, will receive invitations. One fun thing about 2023 is that the royal family has switched to an evite system for a lot of their events, so people are RSVPing as we speak. King Charles is reportedly inviting only 2,000 people, a quarter of the guests that attended Queen Elizabeth's coronation in 1953. At Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, guests were seated just 18 inches apart, which is against modern fire code, so it's not going to happen. But more than that, the palace is spinning this as more modern, more frugal, less wasteful. But I don't think downsizing translates well into true populist sentiment. To me, it seems like it would just make the guest list even more exclusive. Because this is the one day I can't honestly see King Charles turning down hereditary peers. There comes now yet another ancient ceremony. The great officers of state and the bishops and the nobles who have borne the swords, the scepters, and other regalia move to the steps of the throne, which stands upon its dais. This throne, like the raised floor of the theatre itself, is descended from those days 1,500 years ago, when the early kings sat for their crowning upon a mound of earth and were then lifted high upon the shoulders of their nobles, so that all the peoples might see them. I bet a lot of peers are calling and texting each other now, like, where are you staying? <laughs> and do we have to buy new ones? I found my grandfather's coronet and it's surprisingly not dry rotted. <laughs> do we need to log in on the Eden Ravenscroft website? Or can we just walk in? What about my wife? Do you think they'll make the girls dress up this time? <laughs> Is a small coronation what the people really want? 
These things really usually come around once in a lifetime, twice if you're lucky. I'd imagine everyone wants to see all the pomp and circumstance, all the pageantry. I certainly do, don't you? I also question who exactly is helping King Charles design this thing. One downside of Queen Elizabeth having such an incredibly long reign is that all the old hands, if you will, are gone. Everybody is saying they don't believe Harry deserves to be invited to the coronation, but that's not even a question. He's not invited. He's commanded to pledge his fealty, like every other duke. Personally, I can't wait to see him very ceremoniously bow, kneel, touch the crown, kiss the cheek, walk backwards, tip his coronet, etc. I would watch just to see the close-up shots of Harry's face as he performed all the rituals. This is Gloucester, by the way, who attended not one, not two, but three coronations as a spare. The video is available for Harry to learn how to conduct himself with some dignity. Number three, <laughs> the party no one wanted to attend. I've gone to some role. <laughs> Very Audience poll, whose manic giggle is more annoying, mine or Harry's? He's probably high or drunk or both. I'd have to be drunk to endure that party. Oh my God, welcome to Portia's birthday party. And to the newest home of one of my favorite couples, two of my BFs, and the record holders for the most homes ever purchased in one city. <laughs> ever. Literally. Could you imagine being such a terrible person that this is, <laughs> this is what a supposedly dear friend has to say about you to move the crowd at your vow renewal? All of the articles call the party star-studded, but they only mention Kris Jenner officiating, Brandy Carlisle performing, and H&M smiling and clapping. <laughs> when you look at the photos, perhaps half of these people or even more are celebrities. The photos are just too terrible to discern who is who. But really, look at this pathetic party. For a 50th birthday party come vow renewal ceremony, this is the crowd you could get together? This crowd does not read star-studded. This crowd reads canceled, which Ellen totally deserves because she is such a weird jerk who was nasty to her employees for many, many years. That must be why she's such good friends with Megan, because after the way Ellen humiliated Megan on her show. Do a squat if you can hear me. <sighs> okay. All right. I haven't been shopping in a while and I love it and I miss it. I haven't been shopping in a while and I love it and I miss it. I love it, 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 I love it. Can I touch things? Can I touch things? Can, can I touch them? Watch me, Pwama. Pwama, watch me, watch me. <laughs> I'm gonna touch, oh, good energy, good energy. Good energy, good energy, good energy, good energy. Good energy. Okay. okay, I have healing powers. I have healing powers. Can you feel my powers? Can you feel my powers? Let's just be silent for a second. Let's just, you know, let's just be silent for a second. I'm surprised Megan is willing to have anything to do with her whatsoever. Then again, narcissists live in a simple black and white world, and both Ellen and Megan are extreme narcissists. In their world, you eat an unlimited amount of shit from people higher than you on the totem pole in an attempt to get ahead, and you shit an unlimited amount on people below you on the totem pole <laughs> to let them know you're better than them. <sighs> Maybe given her worldview, Megan objectively accepts she's simply a link or two down from Ellen on the Hollywood human centipede. What do you think? Would you be caught dead at this party? Would you go just for the business networking? Or would you feel deeply uncomfortable showing up casually dressed for a garden party at your neighbor's? 
only to find out you're expected to witness and give all the emotional gravitas to the incredibly meaningful day of people you can only describe as cordial acquaintances because it turns out they're just kind of nasty and don't have friends. Last thing about this photo, you'll notice some people are holding a drink, some people are clapping, but Megan is doing neither. Megan is waving. She is waving at presumably Chris Jenner, Ellen, and Portia. <laughs> She's such a narcissist that in the very moment they're renewing their vows, she's expecting them to pay attention to her, not the other way around. Remarkable. Okay, that's it for tonight, but I will see you tomorrow with another open gossip chat post on three more H&M items that made me laugh out loud. <laughs> Toodles! Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.